First of all, before I go on a rant, before I go on a rant, uh, we should say that uh, Stacey Abrams is an extremely classy, classy individual. Uh, whatever you think about her decision, although she's not calling it um, conceding, obviously she is choosing not to fight on. So she is conceding the election. She's just not using the phrase. But it was an extremely graceful speech, I thought. Um, and it was an extremely classy move. I believe that it is the wrong move. Um, but I'm also saying that as a white person. And as I've learned from uh, Ty, who obviously is our uh, photojournalist, uh, you know, black people don't have the same luxuries as white people. Um, even though I don't think she should have conceded, um, I think that, you know, she's looking at it from a picture that she's not only up against the rigged system in Georgia, but as a black woman, she's up against centuries of racism in Georgia. So I will say, um, in one breath, I applaud her for, for the grace of her speech, but in the other br breath, um, I think she made the wrong choice, and I'll tell you why. This is bigger than Georgia, and this is bigger than Stacey Abrams, and this is bigger than Brian Kemp. Thank you, Gene, 20 bucks in the super chat. This is a super chat. This is about a rigged country. We don't, we don't just have a rigged country economically. We don't just have a rigged country socially. We have a rigged country electorally. We saw it in 2016 because I saw it in 2016. If you read my book, Corporate Con Job, which you, Jen will put the link in there if you want to read it, Bernie Sanders had, this, had the primary stolen from him. Not just, it's not always when voting machines are rigged. It's not always when um, uh, there's literal fraud. It's the whole system. How in the world, again, I applaud her on that speech. I'm not knocking her. It was graceful. But how in the world was Stacey Abrams, she's sitting there saying, I'm going to go back to being a private citizen. This was the Secretary of State of Georgia, who was, while making decisions on running for governor and then announcing his governor, purging voters off the rolls. Stacey Abrams' campaign, and by the way, a little behind the scenes, I spoke with Bernie Sanders' campaign after the New York primary purge, and I said, why isn't Bernie howling about this? I was told that they didn't want to look like sore losers, and he was focused on Pennsylvania. It's not looking like a sore loser when you say, no, this isn't a fair election. No, this isn't democracy. This is elected officials rigging the election for themselves or their desired candidate. If we are told as Americans and as progressives that nonviolent, nonviolent protest is the only way to succeed and get them at the voter booth. Well, we've been doing the nonviolent protest and we've been going to the voter booth. But if the voting booth is just a symbol, it doesn't actually mean anything because it's totally rigged. It's either rigged by the media who misreport superdelegates to make it seem like Bernie Sanders is like way the fuck down compared to Hillary Clinton. It's either rigged by uh, basically those same super delegate delegates signing on to Hillary Clinton before anyone else announced their election. It's rigged when you don't have laws in place that bar people like Brian Kemp or Chris Kobach in Kansas who did lose from making decisions about the voting base and who will be allowed to vote in elections that they are running in. Is this a banana republic or is it a democracy? Because you can't have both. Oh no, the suppression of this channel is in the US and Canada, it's everywhere. We are getting throttled. So to all 216 of you watching right now, share the button, press the share button, and make sure you put in your calendar, I will be live noon Eastern time. Noon Eastern time on Sunday for a special marathon uh, super chat. We're trying to raise money. We're trying to raise our GoFundMe. We're trying to get out in the field. 
So I understand why Stacey Abrams thinks she's rising above it. I understand that there's probably financial um, considerations. It's not cheap to con- continue filing lawsuit after lawsuit. They've been filing lawsuits left and right in Georgia. But by dropping out, by conceding, you are giving credence to the fact that this was actually an election. This wasn't an election. This was a democratic theft. This is a democratic theft. I don't care if you're progressive. I don't care if you're conservative. I don't care if you're a MAGA person. I don't care what you are. The only way to actually change this country, other than journalism, which is how I'm trying to do it myself, other than protest, is by voting. So if the strings are being pulled by people like Brian Kemp, and there's nobody above Brian Kemp to do anything, I don't, you know what? If Barack Obama was president still, you really think his Department of Justice would have went in and did anything about this? No. No. In what type of democratic system could you have a secretary of state running for governor and deciding who's going to be purged off the voting rolls? That is the definition of a conflict of interest. That is a definition of rigging an election for yourself. And hey, look through electoral history. Who gets, who's generally the biggest, biggest race that's purged off the voting rolls? Black people. It happened in the 2000 election. I think 85,000 black people were purged off the rolls in Florida. It's happened during the 2016 election. It happened in the 2018 midterms. Where, uh, Greg Powest has done great reporting. I ain't mad at you, Greg, but you haven't responded to me. I've been trying to interview you. Start that. This is, this is the definition. It's not just racism. It is what authoritarian dictatorships do. Uh, Russia does ballot stuffing. Uh, other countries like it. Basically, it's, it's for show the election, but it's rigged from the start. But this was rigged out in the open. And you know what? You know what? You know who also is to blame for this? The Democratic Party. Where was Tom Perez before this election? sending out emails that we need to start protesting outside the Georgia Capitol. After Rolling Stone reported that 340,000 voters were purged off the voter rolls by this man, Brian Kemp, where was the Democratic Party? Where was Nancy Pelosi? Where was Chuck Schumer? Nowhere to be found. Nancy Pelosi was sitting there doing fundraisers with big bankers, big oil, and big pharma and pushing centrist candidates. And Chuck Schumer, if you read the reports on what happened with Facebook, was apparently busy intervening on Facebook's behalf as they defrauded their users. I don't give a damn. Facebook suppresses me to all hell, so I don't really care. So, uh, again, I say this humbly, and I say this in mind that I am white and I am not black, So it is harder for black people than I. It is harder for black politicians than a white politician. And I'm sure there are a lot of circumstances in the background that we don't know of, including financial costs to keep going. But she should have, she should have, in my view, and I think there would have been funding to do that, do it if this is what she called for. She should have sued all the way to the Georgia Supreme Court and then all the way to the Supreme Supreme Court, even if she lost every step of the way. Naturally, Malika says she's probably threatened and doesn't have enough money. That could be true. I happen to know elected officials that have been threatened in communities that I've covered. Their kids have been threatened. I don't say it publicly because there's no reason to put those elected officials or their kids at risk. Mitch Devi, every live stream, try to come up with one good news subject, Jordan. Thanks. I'll I'll try that, Mitch but let's not put our, bury our hands in the, hands in the sand, heads in the sand. This is not a, you know, rainbows and sunshine kind of 
situation America's in. Income inequality is exploding. It's exploded under Bill Clinton. It exploded under uh, Bush, in addition to the wars, Obama, and now Trump. People are living paycheck to paycheck. Half the country's poor. So if you want, if you want good stuff, if you want nice stuff, go watch BuzzFeed's cat videos. Can't do it. If I have something good to report, I will. I just reported last week that the Keystone XL pipeline permit got revoked. But unfortunately, doing my job as a reporter, I had to just report yesterday that the oil company's blowing it off. So go watch that interview that probably didn't even show up in your feed. I interviewed the chairman of the Cheyenne River Sioux Tribe in South Dakota, who's now telling me that they're not even listening to the federal judge. Trans, Trans, Trans Canada is going ahead with construction anyway. That is right here on this channel. You probably didn't get it in your feed because YouTube, it's not YouTube, it's YouTube doesn't notify people when channels like me are live because they're trying to drown out progressive voices. That's why I tell you, put it in your calendar. I'm live every single day, 5 p.m. Eastern. And for the next few weeks, I will be live every single Sunday, noon Eastern time. The first time I went live for the Super Chat Sunday, we raised $5,000 and I was live for seven and a half hours. I don't know how, mu how long I'm going this Sunday. I'll go as long as you'll, you'll have me. And we'll certainly be talking about this also. But again, this is bigger than Stacey Abrams. It's bigger than Georgia. We live in a rigged electoral system. And make no mistake, folks, if Bernie runs again in 2020, they're going to try to rig it more than they did in 2016. But Democratic candidates rising above it. No, no, no. The time to speak out respectfully to the Abrams campaign was months ago when this was starting to become clear. The time for lawsuits was months ago when the purges started becoming clear. The reporting was there. People like Greg Palast was reporting this, but the problem is candidates like Stacey Abrams, who was trying to make history as the first black governor of Georgia, she was listening probably to Democratic Party insiders and consultants saying, stay on message, don't come off like a sore loser, it will turn off voters. No, come off like a fighter. And hey, if you're fighting against a rigged election, if you're fighting against an opponent who's literally tossing out your potential voters, people would actually have respect for you. I'm not knocking Stacey Abrams. I, I think her speech was grace, graceful and classy, but you don't accept election fraud. You don't accept election theft. Because if we keep accepting this, then what is the point of voting? What is the point of protesting? What is the point of doing journalism? What is the point of even pretending we live in a democracy or a republic? 